Hey guys, today we're going to start a series of tutorials on a technique called Diffusion Tensor Imaging, or DTI for short. Uh, these are scans that are sometimes acquired in addition to a typical fMRI study. Sometimes they're just acquired on their own. And as opposed to uh, an fMRI study which acquires images over time, tries to fit a model of a brain activity to that, DTI is more a measure of structural connectivity. So in other words, you're trying to get a sense of where there are directions in the flow of certain bundles of neurons called, called fascicles, and specifically in the white matter. The reason for this is that if you were to take a brain, if you've ever done dissection of a human brain and anatomy, or uh, say of a, an animal brain, what, what you would notice is if you actually started to peel off certain parts of cortex, maybe you didn't get to this, but you would actually see that it has preferred tear directions. It's almost like string cheese once you get down to the white matter. And so the idea behind that is that if you release something into those tracts, they're going to be constrained and they're going to diffuse in a selective direction, specifically in the orientation of that fiber, as opposed to, say, uh, a spherical container, say a balloon or something, where if you diffused a gas into there, it would more or less spread out randomly and not be constrained. So isotropy is when it's in this balloon-shaped container and there's no preferred direction where it diffuses. And anisotropy is referring to the fact that there is a preferred direction for diffusion. And that's what DTI is trying to measure. So let's take a look here. This uh, is just a good graph that I found just showing you what isotropy looks like, how the molecules were just diffused at random. And as these get narrower, there is more anisotropy, which means that the molecules start to diffuse in a preferred direction along the, the axes of, of this, for lack of a better word, this, this tract, because we really are interested in the diffusion of water molecules along white matter tracts. One more thing, uh, I just want you to know I am using online data for this. I haven't been able to find a good repository for free DTI data. I don't have a DTI data set myself. So what I'm going to do for these next few tutorials is work through one of these FSO examples, which I think will be useful. It'll illustrate some of the concepts behind it and give you a good understanding what DTI data looks like and how to analyze it in FSL. So for this, make sure that you go just Google FSL course, click on the FSL course link that comes up. I'll also try to post this below in the box and go down to data files and download file two, which is diffusion data, okay? And also for right now, um, I just want to show you if you do have a single, say, DTI data set, the first thing you want to do is you want to convert this. And luckily enough, it's very easy to do this with something like the MRI cron DICOM to Nifty tool. So if I open up DICOM to NII, GUI, and I open that up, Remember that you can easily convert DICOM images to neuroimaging files by just clicking and dragging all your DTI files into this DICOM to knee GUI right here. So these are all DICOM files just from a sample subject. And if I selected all of them, drag them in here, I've already converted them. What you'd get is a BVAL file, a BVEC file, and the DTI, the diffusion weighted image. Okay, so BVAL, BVEC, these are simply uh, values that are going to help you determine both the direction of diffusion and also how much diffusion is going on in a specific voxel or along a specific tract. Okay, uh, first thing you'd want to do, again this is just a very brief overview just to get, get you grounded, get your feet wet with how to do DDI data. The first thing is you would actually do something very similar to motion correction which is called eddy current correction. So you just upload in this, your diffusion weighted data. Okay, simple enough. Give it an output, reference volume if you want to, it doesn't matter that much, and then hit go. It takes a long time, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna review this. But after you do that, the next step would be to do DTI fit, which is reconstruct these diffusion tensors, giving us a sense of where the predominant direction of diffusion is going along these different fibers. For this, I click specify input files manually. A diffusion weighted data, again, this is the output from uh, this conversion tool. I use DICOM to knee GUI, but just make sure that you're selecting 
this diffusion weighted image. It's going to automatically fill in this output base name. That's that's fine for me. And here, uh, one other thing I should probably mention is that I also created a mask, just like what we, what we do through BET. Very simple. There are other tutorials on this that I've made before, so consult those if you have any questions about that. It also wants the BVEC file, which again has been very easily provided through converting it through DICOM to NIGUI, and also the B value files. Okay, once you hit go, it just does that for every slice. It goes pretty quickly, and once this is done, we can see very easily what a typical DTI uh, diffusion tensor fitting looks like. So just to get you familiar with how you go from this raw DTI data to constructing something that looks like what you would see in, say, a DTI paper. This is only for one subject, which is, is not interesting, um, unless you did one subject at one time point, then at another time point, say after an intervention or something. But for right now, we're just going to look at a single subject to look at these tensors. So first of all, notice that there have been a bunch of files output with DTI prefixed to them. Uh, DTI FA is what I'm going to load up first. This is the image of fractional anisotropy, which in itself isn't going to look too much different from a typical anatomical data set, or just a really high resolution uh, T2 weighted data set. I'm also going to add one of the principal vectors, in this case, let's say DTI V1. And once I've done that, go down here and click on this I, <laughs> this I next to the I. <laughs> I like to have fun sometimes. And for this uh, image type is going to be diffusion tensor, and we're also going to display it as RGB. Okay, so now this is looking a little bit more familiar, and we're going to modulate it by the DTI FA, the underlying fractional anisotropy data set. So this this already looks pretty similar to what we would see in a typical paper. Uh, this is just for a single subject though, it doesn't tell us that much, but what we can see is that after we've done this very basic DTI pre-processing, we have different color codings for where the direction of diffusion is. So for red, that's diffusion primarily along the left, right, or X direction in fMRI terms, or just neuroimaging terms. Right? And that makes sense that it seems the heaviest along the corpus callosum because those bundles of white matter tracks do indeed run primarily from left to right. In some place like the internal capsule, uh, you see more blue, and that is diffusion that's primarily going from head to foot or in the Z direction. Right? So the internal capsule, remember, that carries information from things like uh, primary, primary motor cortex, primary, primary somatosensory cortex, both uh, efferent and afferent nerves communicating with the rest of the body and the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And lastly, green is primarily diffusion going from, uh, say, the back of your head to the front of your head, or in other words, the Y direction. Okay, so things like the fascicles going from the back to the front, those are primarily represented by green. So that's just to, to again, give you a very uh, simple start into DTI analysis. It, first of all, it looks cool. It'll give you some confidence that, hey, I can actually create one of those tensor maps, just like what they do in published papers. What we're going to be doing through the tutorials, though, is doing what they would do, actually do in one of those published papers, which would be to compare, say, a control data set to some other data set. Let's say patients who have schizophrenia or OCD or autism, or say just an elderly population compared to a younger, healthy, functioning population. And then you could compare differences in, say, white matter integrity along certain white matter tracks, giving you a sense of where there might be, uh, say, a greater amount of uh, diffusion in certain directions, uh, in certain regions, and give you more insight into how, say, different connections between different areas are being disrupted or maybe how they're functioning well in healthy controls. Again, DTI, it's, it's pretty broad. You shouldn't read too much into it, but gathered with other data, it can provide a more comprehensive picture. So we'll be starting on that in the next series of tutorials. Uh, thanks a lot, and I will see you guys next time.